the tyburn ghost some years ago a lady and her three daughters who generally resided in the country had reason to visit the metropolis after some trouble in the way of house hunting they settled in a lodging located in a small street in close proximity to the marble arch hyde park it was summer time about the middle of july and the heat being intense the atmosphere or the want of it in a small lodging-house was very oppressive mrs dale however was not very sensitive to stuffiness besides which had she been so she was not well off enough to afford a more spacious dwelling indeed had it not been for the landlady's obliging disposition and readiness to accede to some alterations suggested by mrs dale in the arrangement of the apartment the latter lady would have been forced to seek a pied de terre in a still less fashionable locality than even dash street but to make our story clear we must describe the relative positions of the rooms in dash street as well as what were the slight alterations suggested by mrs dale and carried out by the obliging mrs parsons who knowing that the season was more than half over felt it was better to put herself out a little than not to let her rooms at all number five dash street was a tenement of the most conventional furnished apartment type and the rooms hired by mrs dale consisted of two small sitting-rooms on the drawing-room floor with folding doors between them and one tolerably good-sized bedroom on the upper story situated exactly above the front sitting-room there was a large four-poster in this upper bedroom in which the two elder young ladies agreed to repose together and mrs dale persuaded the landlady to allow another four-poster to be placed in the back sitting-room for her convenience and that of her youngest daughter they also electing to sleep therein together this was an economical arrangement necessitating the use of only two beds instead of four or at least of three and as lodging housekeepers charge according to the number of the beds used the arrangement was a satisfactory one for mrs dale upon the appointed day rather late in the evening the dale family arrived in dash street mrs dale had had some business to transact in the city so after a frugal supper they began to think of retiring for the night mrs parsons being a busy hard-working woman was nothing loath and soon brought in the extra bed toilet table etc and after bidding her lodgers a hearty good night left them to themselves mrs dale had already thrown herself into the expectant arms of an inviting fauteuil intent upon enjoying a free and easy yawn when she suddenly noticed for the first time that there was a balcony outside the window which ran along the whole row of the dash street houses not being of an imaginative temperament however the only nocturnal danger which presented itself to the lady's innocently conventional mind was cats thereupon the following colloquy took place between her and her daughter minnie who was to be her bedfellow minnie mind you shut that window by all means mother and mind you lock it too for i am terrified at cats minnie was a very dutiful daughter but all the same she could not but think in her inner consciousness that if the window were shut it would take a very uncommon cat to open it even if it were not locked she however silently and humbly obeyed orders and after much straining and struggling managed to shut and lock the window thus imprisoning within the stuffy little room the pleasing odour of the evening meal which had consisted of pickled salmon and welsh rarebit and also effectually preventing the entrance of the least breath of fresh air and now that we are comfortable said mrs dale whose complexion was shining from a combination of heat and eat 
we may as well go to bed accordingly having kissed and dismissed her two daughters who were to sleep upstairs she and minnie commenced disrobing themselves in the back sitting-room i think said mrs dale after pondering a little that if we lock both the doors which open into the drawing-rooms from the staircase we might safely sleep with the folding doors open between the two rooms and so be cooler and we shall get more air don't you think we will do so said the obedient minnie flinging open the folding doors she then kissed her mother affectionately and got into bed now the room was small and the four-poster was large so it had been found necessary to place the latter almost in the centre of the former there was just room for one chair between the bed and the wall on minnie's side and only a little larger space accompanied by an ottoman and a small table upon mrs dale's side by this time minnie who was the most active and efficient sister of the three and upon whom the principal responsibilities of the family were laid was very tired and soon very soon after she had felt her mother lie down by her side she fell fast asleep the ladies were lying back to back minnie's face being turned to the wall and her mother's towards the ottoman on the other side of the room suddenly minnie was awakened by a sharp exclamation of seeming terror from her mother and turning round she beheld the old lady sitting bolt upright in the bed her teeth were chattering her nightcap was awry and she was shaking in every limb what's the matter mother i've i've seen something she gasped but what what an old hag with a villainous face and hanging lips oh mother don't you think it's fancy you know you never sleep well in a strange bed it wasn't fancy answered the terrified woman she passed along there pointing with a shaking hand along the wall and when she turned and saw me looking at her she came close to me in a threatening way and put her horrid putrid-looking face close into mine Fah! i smelt death she also nodded viciously and laughed at my fright showing black slimy teeth then she pointed jeeringly with her brown skeleton finger close to my face and curtsied very low and the perspiration poured off the poor old lady's face at the recollection dearest mother said minnie tenderly you are overtired and nervous come and sleep this side of the bed for no one can get at you here between the bed and the wall and the good daughter helped her mother over into her place while she lay down in her mother's minnie slept peacefully for some time when suddenly she awoke feeling curiously uneasy and for some reason she dreaded to open her eyes then after a second or two she began to realize that something someone was very close to her that in fact a face was almost touching hers for she smelt a fetid breath like to what she fancied must be the odour of the grave with an effort she opened her eyes and beheld the figure of an old woman who as the terrified girl started into a sitting posture retreated to the foot of the bed seemingly prepared however to spring upon its occupant for she clung to both the bedposts with her brown claw-like hands both arms distended and her head bent slightly forward her small lithe body meanwhile swaying to and fro as though to give it the necessary impetus the hag's face was the wickedest minnie had ever seen and was mottled and brown in colour as though in a state of decomposition she wore an old-fashioned mob cap trimmed with a wreath of roses 
an incongruous headdress for so ghastly a head and a malicious grin parted the charred and blackened lips she was dressed in a brown silk sack embroidered all over with pink roses and minnie fancied she heard the tapping of high-heeled shoes as the detestable apparition seemingly changing its intention relinquished the bedposts and once more began to approach her curtsying ironically as though enjoying the girl's terror but minnie being religiously courageous pulled herself together and the sacred words seemed to spring solemnly to her lips in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost i bid thee be gone a mingled expression of fear and malignant hatred appeared in the evil hag's face as minnie slowly uttered these words then the figure shrank crouched against the wall and finally disappeared minnie knew now that she had seen an evil spirit and was also convinced that her adjuration had had effect and that she should never be troubled again in the same way those sacred words would always she felt have power complete power over the devil and his angels so in peace she lay down and slept till morning she deemed it best to say nothing to her mother of what she had seen and when the old lady while dressing the next morning reiterated her assertion that what she had seen was not a dream nor had it been nightmare all that minnie answered was she hoped her mother would not relate her experiences to the two sisters who slept upstairs as it was no use to frighten them to this mrs dale agreed the old lady felt nervous all the same for a night or two after the strange occurrence but being troubled no more by the unpleasant nocturnal visitor she became quite bold and began to think that after all it might have been the fault of the pickled salmon and that the welsh rarebit might also have had something to do with it having also a great deal of business to transact in the city and the rooms being convenient she decided to stay a fortnight longer in dash street one day the second sister janet asked for a private word with minnie and told her that she janet felt very ill and that both she and the other sister mary by name fancied there must be something unwholesome in the bedroom in which they slept as they had neither of them felt well since their sejour in dash street minnie looked anxiously at her sisters and could not but acknowledge to herself that they both looked ill and reproached herself for not having noticed it before the fortnight was however nearly over so she spoke to her mother and it was settled that they should leave the very next day but that they must send for the landlady and tell her so as she was expecting them to stay a day or two longer mrs parsons was much put out at the news and asked the reason of so sudden a departure was there anything she could do or had she left anything undone as she spoke she looked in a strangely suspicious manner at mrs dale and murmured she hoped if there was any reason of complaint that the ladies would tell her oh no mrs parsons answered mrs dale we have been most comfortable but my daughters fancy there is a smell in their bedroom upstairs and that consequently it is not quite wholesome can you account for this i hope the young ladies will tell me exactly from what they suffer is there anything else besides the smell minnie turned to janet who looked as though she could barely stand and gasped out yes i will tell the truth and mary come here and corroborate what i say for i can bear it no longer mrs parsons every night for the last week or more between the hours of one and three my sister and i are visited by a villainous old hag 
and at the remembrance of what she had gone through of distress and terror janet so nearly swooned that after a few minutes mary was compelled to become spokeswoman yes she said what janet says is true but we kept silence knowing it was an object to mother to remain here the old hag mary continued shuddering looks like a devil and as though she had mouldered for years in her grave her lips look as though they were falling off horrible horrible enough said mrs parsons holding up her hand i know it all and this cursed house has been my ruin i ought never to have stayed here but what can a poor widow do i got it cheap as it had a bad name and now see she then related that the house had been sold to her cheap by a relative who had warned her it was haunted by the old woman whom the dale family had seen she had never seen the ghost herself and would not believe in it but upon making anxious researches she had discovered that the house was built on the very site of tyburn and once when for sanitary purposes excavations had been made a lot of charred bones had been unearthed thereby attesting to the truth of what she had been told after hearing her story mrs dale felt sorry for the woman and before leaving made her a small present in money at the same time impressing upon her that it was scarcely fair or honourable for her under the circumstances to receive lodgers she also offered to help her always in any small way she could and she felt glad afterwards to think she had done so for not many months later she read in the papers that number five dash street had been burnt to the ground and that the poor landlady's body had been found among the ruins bearing incontestable signs of the unfortunate woman having mercifully been suffocated years later as some workmen were digging on the same spot for fresh foundations an old coffin was unearthed and upon its being opened it was found to contain fragments of a female skeleton a brown silk gown in wonderful preservation some human teeth and a wreath of artificial roses end of the tyburn ghost